Hi again, everyone, and welcome in to Cincinnati Bengals Talk, the fastest growing Bengals channel on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm James Erpine, and our training camp preview for the 2021 season continues today with defense. Lose crew. Can Bengals defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo get the most out of a new look revamped group that includes a bunch of free agent signings, some new draft picks, and more? We're going to dive into that right now, and let's start with the back end of the secondary. The one area that there aren't many question marks going into camp the safety position. Von Bell is a a guy that's going to play in the box, deliver big hits, and he compliments star safety. Probably the Bengals' best player, Jesse Bates, extremely well. Because Bates can cover ground. Bell delivers the hits. They both dominated from a a tackling standpoint last year. Both had over 100 tackles, which says a lot about the defense in and of itself. At the same time, I don't really question either of these guys. Now, there's a a third spot up for grabs, and, and that's where... If there's a an interest in the safety spot, that's where it, get, it gets interesting. Because you got Trayvon Henderson, a guy who you know played a couple games, but was more of a practice squad player last year. And then you got Brandon Wilson, who we think of as a special teamer, but is also a safety. And then the Bengals go out and get Ricardo Allen in free agency. And so that's where it gets interesting. I would imagine Allen would be that third safety, but that is one of the many camp battles we'll be watching. Let's stick with the secondary and look at this revamped, remade cornerback room. The big three are the big three are the big three. I think these guys uh, certainly fit each other well. Hopefully they can thrive in Luana Rumo's defense. That's one thing Lou told me when I asked him. He said, look, we want consistent cornerbacks that are going to be physical. And he feels like the, the top three guys, all free agent additions over the past two years, can do that. Trey Wayne's coming off that torn pectoral injury will lead the way, followed by Chido Bea who they signed in March from Dallas. They like both of these guys, their consistency, their athleticism, their ability to, to run and move and tackle. And then Mike Hilton, who I think a lot of Bengals fans are familiar with. Obviously, he comes from the Pittsburgh Steelers and he's going to play that nickel spot. And so you look at those three pretty much etched in stone there. And then behind them, this is where it gets interesting because Darius Phillips has great ball skills, maybe the best ball skills on the team, but he's inconsistent. And so can he earn the trust of this Bengals coaching staff moving forward? Will he just be a punt returner? Will he be able to win that punt returner job? We'll get into that as part of the special teams preview uh, on our next video. But to me, Darius Phillips, he's going to be pushed here by Eli Apple. You go out and you get a former first rounder an Apple who's got a lot to prove and is familiar with Luana Rumo. Anna Rumo was in New York when the Giants drafted him in the first round a few years ago. So to me, the Bengals are five deep at corner, which is uh, in a better spot than they were last year at this time. And just a couple of guys that you never know, right? Jalen Davis, Winston Rose, Antonio Phillips, guys that are going to be battling for a practice squad spot. But You never know. Maybe they push for a spot on that final 53, especially if there is an injury or two. Let's shift gears. Let's look at the men in the trenches, because, again, just as as new look as the cornerback room is, the defensive line room, kind of the same. DJ Reader, uh, kind of the same as in new look. Uh, DJ Reader returns. Sam Hubbard returns. After that, Larry Ogunjobi's new. Trey Hendrickson, obviously new. Cam Sample, Tyler Shelvin. You got a lot of guys that are new to the team. They did bring back Mike Daniels, but no more Geno Atkins. Obviously, Carlos Dunlap is no longer in town. So you're talking about a revamped unit. And I'm excited to see it. What I'll be looking for in training camp from these guys, one, the rotation. How do they rotate in and out? What guy is going where? We know who's going to start, right? I mean, it's going to be Trey Hendrickson on one side, Sam Hubbard on the other. It's going to be DJ Reader and Larry Ogunjobi. But after that, how much run does Cam Sample get? How much run does Joseph Osai get? How much run does Tyler Shelvin get? And does DJ Reader look as explosive as he did last year before his injury? Can Trey Hendrickson really be that, you know, every down edge rusher that the Bengals are paying him to be? That's a a, a big question mark. I I think that's fair. Can Sam Hubbard take a step forward after an injury riddled and injury plagued 2020 where he was really playing through injury even when he was out there and was clearly not 100% for most of the season. So that, that's the the main questions I have about that rotation and which young guy emerges because one of them is going to emerge, right? It might be Joseph Osai. I think he 
uh, is the most likely candidate because he played at Texas, was uh, an elite athlete there. I think he's ready to go against the run in a physical division like the AFC North. And I think he's athletic enough to figure it out pass rushing wise. I know a lot of people have said, and I've even made the comparison to Carl Lawson. I think Carl Lawson was more refined as a pass rusher coming out of Auburn than Osai is right now. At the same time, I think Osai is better against the run. So we'll see there. But wouldn't be shocked at all if Tyler Shelvin's getting a little time, certainly in the AFC North in this run-heavy division. Or maybe we do see Cam Sample emerge there. And let's go to the, the second level of the defense because to me, question marks, question marks, question marks, and more question marks, right? Let's start with the, the second-year men that a lot of people are expecting to lead the way. First, Logan Wilson. I think he flashed his potential. He's 24 years old, so you're expecting him uh, not only to hit the ground running as a rookie, and it took him a little time adjusting from Wyoming to the NFL, but I think he flashed, and now the Bengals are hoping that he takes that leadership role and really establishes himself as a leader on this defense and a leader of that linebacking room. And then after that, Akeem Davis Gaither. Look, he was this hybrid type player at Appalachian State. He moved all over. He did a bunch of different things. He's going to have to learn, you know, the the NFL linebacker position in, in how to do that. And I think last year he's, he started to show flashes at the end. We saw an interception. We saw him make some plays. I would love to, love to, love to see him uh, off the edge a bit, blitzing, and, and hopefully, because here's the thing. He's so athletic. He can run with running backs. And I, I recall, I, I don't know if it was against the Ravens or another team last year, but he got beat by a running back one play and the next play stride for stride and made a play on the ball. And that's the thing. Can he be more consistent there? We'll see. But I, I certainly like his potential. And then after that, can Jermaine Pratt take a step forward or is Jermaine Pratt what he was last year? Because I thought he took a step back from rookie year to second year. And I talked to some people in the organization. They think he's an extremely hard worker and they're expecting pretty big things from him. So We'll see about Pratt. But then after that, it's even more question marks. I mean, you're talking about Marcus Bailey, Jordan Evans. I mean, there's no clear-cut fourth, fifth guy. And the only other guy they got is uh, Joe Bacci, who they uh, claimed off waivers from the Philadelphia Eagles. So we'll see. I wouldn't be shocked if, you know, they only keep four linebackers, maybe five, right? I think five would be a lot, honestly. Uh, You know, um, with the practice squad, they could go that route. But I think it's going to be a, a thin athletic linebacker room where they got a couple guys on the practice squad. And, and it'll probably be five. I mean, I, I would say Akeem Davis Gaither, Logan Wilson, Jermaine Pratt, Marcus Bailey, Jordan Evans, if I have to guess. And I don't want to leave Keandre Jones out. So Jones and, and Batchy will be the two uh, really fighting for a spot here in my eyes, depending on injury, of course. But to me, This Bengals defense should be better. The pass rush should be better. Even Mike Hilton helps the pass rush. And can Lou Anarumo get the most out of a defense that he helped put together? That's the biggest question mark, right? When I did my offensive preview, and make sure you check it out, I had a bunch of question marks. And there are on defense for sure. How does the secondary gel? How does this defensive line, do they get pressure? But to me, now it's about scheme. Because these guys feel like they were handpicked, that they fit Lou Anarumo's scheme. That's great. How does it play out? And that is the big question that uh, we will ask all training camp long. And the good news is we're going to have you covered here. Every single snap, every single game, every single practice on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. And if you've been here, thank you so much uh, for the kind words, the kind comments that I've seen. I love every single one of them. And uh, just know that we are getting started. And make sure you follow us on social media as well. There's a link in our bio to all of our social media accounts. Until next time, I'm James Erpine, and thank you so much for watching right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk.